Hello, Farosh is here. Today we are going to talk about streams, tags, and messages. These are uh, fundamental concepts relating to how we pass information between blocks. Let's consider this basic simple example that we have a source and we have a sink and there is a connection between them. In this case, this connection is stream. Streams of data in uh, GNU Radio work pretty much the same as you would expect them to work if they were just drawn on Blackboard in classroom. It means data comes out of one block, gets passed to the other uh, block. Under the hood, there is a pretty intelligent part of GNU Radio called the scheduler that manages the uh, output buffer of each block and uh, tries to maximize the amount of throughput that you can pass through your flow graph and optimize your processing power, making sure things are going as fast as they can. Now, when we are talking about streams, we are talking about data that is not marked. The, the data that is being passed between the blocks does not have any reference of uh, particular importance. So a lot of the time in our applications, we may need to signify a start of packet. We may, we may want to signify some event that has happened and the block has information that wants to be passed to the other blocks about uh, those informations that it has acquired about some particular point in time. Uh, those are passed through tags usually. When we want to pass data that is inherently uh, packetized and uh, we don't need to have exceptionally high uh, performance on how we uh, manage the memory and how we uh, optimize the amount of copying that is taking place, we can use uh, message passing uh, um, framework inside GNU Radio. A typical uh, use case of that would be to pass packets of data between higher level uh, digital communication parts that do not need a lot of uh, bandwidth in terms of memory bandwidth to communicate back and forth. It is going to be several megabytes per second, for example, not uh, not going to be a bottleneck in your performance. So not, let's consider this example and we will go through all of these uh, modes of operation inside GNU Radio. In this simple uh, example, you have a source, you have a sink, and it works as you would expect a sink to interact with a source. It is going to generate a, a cosine wave that is going to have frequency of 100 Hertz. And in our receiver, we know the sample rate. We have set the sample rate to 32 kilohertz, but there is going to be a catch. So let's first run this and see it works as expected. As you can see, the receiver is receiving the signal and it is uh, marking its time correctly and the sample uh, is we cannot see any abnormality here, but I don't know if you can hear my fan in the background. The fan of my laptop just kicked in. The reason for this is in GNU Radio, the scheduler is trying to p push as many samples as it, as it can throughout the flow graph. So it does not know and it does not care about the sample rate value that I have set here. It is just trying to push as many samples as it, as it can uh, throughout this simple flow graph. Therefore, the actual amount of samples that are going through are huge. In the, it is not going to be 32 kilo samples per second. It is going to be limited by the amount of processing power that I have in my laptop, and there is no restrictions on that here. So that may um, makes sense in a lot of applications, but in a lot of applications, we really don't want to max out our CPU. Therefore, we are going to use a block that will um, 
throttle the amount of uh, data that goes through a flow graph. This block is called throttle and its sole purpose is that it will not let data flow through it more faster than some sample rate. So let's delete this connection. The data is not going to be modified. It is going to be the same data. And if we run it, we are going to see the same plot. But the amount of data that is being passed is now controlled and throttled. So let me show you how it looks. As you can see, there is no significant burden on my CPU. Let's try it without throttle. And this is going to be as fast as my computer is able to handle. As you can see, it is significantly more de demanding on my computer. Now let's talk about tagging. So there, in a lot of applications, maybe you have a block that is decoding the location of a header or a preamble on a data stream. Maybe you want to signify that information to the downstream blocks that are consuming that information. You want to pass some tags associated with a single sample on the stream of data that you are going to pass. It is quite conveniently implemented in GNU Radio and we can use that. I'm going to demonstrate it in a very simple application and we are, instead of me using this signal source, I'm going to just use, I'm going to use a tag string. And we are going to see that the sink here can receive the samples that are marked with a certain tag. And not only that, it is also programmed to display them on the uh, flow, on the graph that it generates. So we, we can easily validate that it is receiving the tags. So as you can see, there are some samples that are marked tag. marked with a tag that we specified. And the tag is specified here. This is the tag that is currently set to be transmitted. Now, let's talk about another form of uh, communication between blocks that is through message passing. Let's consider a simple message source. No, not this message source. <laughs> this is a message source that will transmit a certain predefined message every uh, periodically. And currently, it is scheduled to transmit it every one second. We can listen to the messages with a debug block, message debug block. And I can simply set it to print whatever it is receiving. So we see we have no GUI and the receiver is just receiving the tag every second. Now let's make it a little bit more interesting and try making everything interact with each other. We are going to have a source, a signal source that is controlled 
by messages. So now this I want to control the frequency of this source through messages. So every once in a while maybe I have some decision making algorithm in my radio and I decide that I need to change some parameter inside another block. I can pass that information through message passing. So let's consider <coughs> I want to pass the frequency to this source and change the frequency of this source when I decide it needs to be changed. So I can ask it to have let's say 300 hertz of uh, frequency but I need to also make it make the type being uh, the type of message that I'm sending being uh, equivalent and being uh, consistent with what I want to send which is a float so I'm now every one second or let's make it two seconds every two seconds I'm going to send a message that contains the float 300 I can send very complex data structures through PMT but we are that's going to be the topic for another video mm -hmm. okay so now I connect this to the frequency message acceptor of this block and now I expect the frequency of this uh, signal source to change when it receives the new message. I'm going to have a throttle to limit the amount of sample rate below my nominal sample rate and I'm going to have a time sync to show the signal let's look at it the frequency is initially at 1 kilohertz and then it receives the message and change the frequency so that's quite convenient that we can send small chunks of information between the in between different blocks very easily and it, it is going to come very handy when we go to more complex uh, custom build blocks which we are going to go through in another series they are called out of three modules and when you are trying to build complex applications you are going to see the convenience that message passing provides now let's have another layer of information being passed so in this uh, example we are seeing that message passing interaction between blocks stream being passed and let's have a tag also being associated with this stream so I can have stream to tag stream tag stream do have tags but they have also more useful properties that we are going to cover in later videos for now we are just interested in tags that are associated with tags tagged strips so the signal comes in and becomes tagged and I can uh, tag it every once in a while so let's tag it every one second because my sampling rate is 32k every 300 and uh, three 32,000 samples I'm going to tag this stream now if I execute this I'm not going to be able to see the tags because a lot of samples are going to be passing that do not have any tag and I'm not going to be able to see any of it is very unlikely for me to catch a, a sample duration a duration of samples that contains a tag so let's look at it 
I'm not seeing any samples that do have tags in them. So what what if I'm very interested in the amount in, in the tags or I want to see signals that are tagged? Fortunately, I can use the trigger in my time sync block to be triggered by the tag. So I can come here and uh, in trigger mode, I can make it trigger on tags. So the name of the tag that I want to be used for trigger is the name of the tag is the key of the tag that I am tagging my stream with so which is packets len as we can see the the first sample uh, the, the tag is a little bit uh, cropped here I'm going to make it uh, a little bit more visible but you can see every time that a, a sample that is received that is tagged with the key packet len it will uh, trigger my virtual oscilloscope and I, I'm going to see the signal that is following that